Hi everyone, this is Laura with Beyond Beauty here at 3D Lash and Brow Academy. Today I am interviewing Warren Burrell. He is the assistant director at over here at 3D Lash and Brow. Um, he's had almost two decades of experience in the beauty industry. Um, so, how's it going today? Great. How Great. are you doing today? Awesome. Doing good. Um, so, I just wanted you to start off. Tell me about um, like how long you, you've been in, like, in the beauty industry, how you got started, just so the viewers can get to know a little bit more about you. Okay, well, uh, I've been in the industry for 26 years. Uh, and uh, the way I, uh, I got into the industry, uh, it was, it's, it's, I'll make a long story short. Uh, when I was a, a, a little boy, my dad used to take me to the barber shop and the, these lines came out, you know, when they started putting lines in the head and stuff like that, like uh, Gary Coleman uh, had in his head on different strokes. Uh, I went and got that. Uh, I asked the barber for it and he put a line in my head. It was like as wide as 635 uh, going both ways on there. So it was a big bald spot, actually. Uh, so right then I knew I probably could do better, better than that. So I talked my dad to buy me some clippers and I uh, started cutting hair with clippers, uh, cutting my own hair, and then I'll cut my dad's hair and all that. Um, became a neighborhood barber, and every now and then I used to go to the salon with my mother, and she went every week. And uh, there was a guy who um, owned the salon, and man, he was making big money. It had all kinds of clients and and things like that, and. Um, one day I decided I wanted to cut hair and so I went to him and I was like hey I'm, I want to do this do you have any uh, advice for me anything or anything I want to be a barber and he was like well you know how to cut hair already I was like yeah I'm like the neighborhood barber he said well uh, I think you should go to do women's hair he said because uh, it'll be more satisfying to you and uh, you can cut hair doing that also I, and I have just a school for you so he uh, recommended me to a school. I went and I went to the school and from there, uh, you know, it's kind of, I did a lot in the industry. I have done a lot in the industry. Yeah, so you mentioned being the neighborhood barber. I know like barbershop salons, usually not like just a place you go to just get your hair done and leave it's a lot of like especially in smaller communities like it's where you hear like get to know people get to know others like form it's like a little community of its own like would you say that was like a formative part of like you growing up and learn how to cut hair and be in the neighborhood barber yes well you know it, it, it's all about being a people person um, and uh, I, I was definitely, uh, I am definitely a people person. I love uh, people and uh, have studied people. And um, it uh, definitely had an impact on what I was doing, you know, definitely, 100%. Yeah, um, so 26 years ago, what are your thoughts on like the hair industry like then like versus now like how have you seen it changed what has affected that uh, well I would say even beyond uh, 26 years ago uh, when cosmetologists first came on the scene uh, they got respect as much respect as a doctor had uh, respect uh, and, and, and people really took the industry very seriously and it made a lot, a whole lot of money. It put the first uh, black doctors and the first black lawyers through school, cosmetology did. And so um, it, uh, as the time has gone by, what happened was, you know, Everybody wants stuff quick, fast, and in a hurry. So you know, uh, uh, it, 
it kind of got watered down a little bit. The education of it got watered down a little bit. And so uh, from then until now, uh, I, I think that uh, uh, there is an abundance of knowledge to know about in this industry. Uh, it, it's just an ongoing learning thing. Like you learn something about it every day. So, you know, um, once you get into the cosmetology school, 80% of that um, course is sanitation and safety. Uh, and then you get to learn like some basic things about cosmetology. But actually, when you get out, then that's when you do your learning. So I, I think that uh, as far as from then until now, it's more of a uh, how bad do you want it or if you are meant to do it or if you're in it because you love it versus if you are just trying to get something that you're able to do. So when you were mentioning um, beyond like um, 26 years ago back in like cosmetology industry like the respect level like the same as doctors do you think now, like, do you think social media has played a part in affecting the cosmetology industry with just the way that literally anyone can blow up overnight, claim to be a hair, um, which, whichever, and anything in that realm expert? Um, like, I know I follow a couple, um, like Brad Mondo on YouTube, he does like he does a bunch of hair videos and then as I see in the comments I'm like they're like you don't even get a cosmetology like right. degree mm -hmm. um so do you think social media has affected the beauty industry for better for worse in what ways well uh I definitely the answer to that is uh, yes I do think the media as a whole has um had an effect on it I uh, remember uh, several, several years ago, uh, Chris Rock came out with a movie called Good Hair. Mm -hmm. That was the worst movie ever, <laughs> okay? Uh, <laughs> it killed our industry. It set us back years, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it had tumbleweave and all this and blowing in the streets, uh, you know, and it was supposed to be kind of like a serious document documentary, but wow, it, it, it killed us. But, and you know, and, and we do have people who are claiming to be hair experts that are not even in the industry, you know, and, and to let that fly is uh, very damaging to the industry, just, just like anything, you know. Um, uh, they, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a shame on how the media will take negative information and blow it up because I guess that's what everybody wants to hear but the positive information it doesn't really come out like it's supposed to you know they say good news bad news travels fast mm -hmm. you know so the good news you got to kind of wait on and and to really be a professional in this industry and do really well in this industry you have to dig and you have to go and find the right education once you leave your schooling to uh advance in this industry absolutely um so are there any um trends in hair or beauty that maybe you look back on and you're like what were we doing <laughs> like what was that or that you just loved and you want to maybe see a comeback okay <laughs> so uh double-edged sword there uh question uh so is there something like before I actually started doing hair, the 80s, that was a time mm -hmm. uh, where hair was big, yep. you know, and uh, bigger here in Texas. Uh, they said the, 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 the bigger the hair, the, you know, the closer, closer the guy. To God, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh Lord, uh, how close do you want to be? Uh, because that was like, I, I, I look back at that and that, that is a certain type of haircut, yeah. but like, I, I probably don't want to see that come back mm -hmm. uh, ever uh, but if it does then you know that's what's going on uh, <laughs> you know we got to roll with it mm -hmm. because everything eventually comes back and it may come back in a different way but it will it does come back 
So, um, other than that, now things I that do come back all the time that I love is haircutting, uh, the bob. Mm -hmm. There's a haircut yes. that there's so many different versions of the bob haircut. It is a wonderful thing, and it's uh, a guy named uh, Vidal Sassoon. I know back. And he was out back in the 70s. If you don't look good, we don't look good. You know, mm -hmm. uh, he had a, 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 a hairline. His hairline wasn't the super duper best at the time or whatever, but he m made an impact on this industry unlike any other person I know. Uh, because he actually made the correlation between haircutting and geometry. The haircutting is nothing but geometry. And I've, I've, taken, I, I've taken his classes and and I've learned to cut uh, the way he cuts, and it is like, it's amazing. It's really, really a good thing. So it, it allowed me to charge upwards of $200 for my haircuts at, at, at times. Wow. So are there any um, like other professionals that you've come across or met, um, like any techniques that you've picked up from them along the way that you like now use? Yes. Um, so when you look at it, all the fashion, uh, all the the uh, things that we look at that 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 that's coming into, like you said, when they they're coming back or something like that. Everything we have as um, uh, um, I'm looking for a word. Uh, okay, the uh, uh, the fashion is it comes from Europe. Oh, okay. Um, and what happens is is they come out with uh, something and then the United States will come out with it like immediately uh, after. So it hits New York first, it goes to California because so many people travel between the coast and then it kind of filters into the middle. Gotcha. You know, when people go out and they get this education, they come back and they start to bring it back and it becomes a trend. Uh, the, the technique that I uh, like uh, uh, it's a color technique. I, I, I like the hair cutting techniques also, but the uh, color color technique called balayage uh, that is a great technique. I mean, when I first um, saw the technique, it, it it looked like someone just had grown out uh, roots. You know, mm -hmm. like uh, the new growth who had just grown out, and and I was like, wow, that's that's ugly. You know what I mean? Like why? Like why you want to look like you? You know, like you, you don't have color. You know, and so um, what happened was was. Can you I, explain a little for those who don't know? We're listening. What exactly balayage is? Okay, mm -hmm. balayage is a balayage means to paint on top, mm -hmm. and it's a French technique. And what it is is you you, you take sections of hair and you put the, um, uh, uh, you have a brush and you paint it on the hair in a, a, a fan-like fashion and you paint, you're painting bleach or a lightener on the hair and it lightens and uh, what happens is it's supposed to look blended uh, and it does when you do it the right way. Uh, so it is, uh, everybody pretty much who gets color these days has balayage, but it's been out for a very, very long time. And I used to uh, manage this salon called Camille Laban, and it's a European-based salon, but they have one over here in Addison off of Beltline. And um, they would have their uh, educators come in from Europe to train us on the European way to do balayage because I've seen different ways to do balayage and it, it, it is butchered. It is it's horrible. But when I really learned the proper way to do it, it's a wonderful thing and it looks so good. And uh, that is one of the techniques that I, I really, I, I, think, I don't think it'll ever go away. Uh, I think uh, it's one of my favorite techniques. Uh, yeah. Along with the uh, uh, color correction, I, I love to do color correction, but like that, uh, the balayage is one of my favorite techniques. Okay. That's interesting that you said balayage is here to stay because I feel like 
I don't know, maybe like 2012-ish. That was like ombre was like the thing. Oh, and Lord. Yeah. <laughs> I think balayage was like an upgraded yeah. version of that. Right. So mm -hmm. ombre, it was more like half of the hair was colored. Mm -hmm. And then the other half was like the new growth color. The, the, the uh, But, or the natural color or darker color. Um, but uh, I've seen um, some people... The, you're talking about the ombres and the and the balia. I mean, yeah, the ombres. Yeah. Yeah. So the ombres, uh, they used to call them home braids because <laughs> uh, you could tell when people would do them at home by themselves because uh. of the hard line of demarcation in it, like it was horrible, and like wow. And so, but there are strategic ways to do these things. And although in this industry there are. 60 different ways to get to the same thing. The best way to do it is the healthiest way for the hair. And that's what that's my uh, thing. I, I'm all about healthy hair. If it's going to damage your hair too much or because it's all con it's all destruction to the hair, but you have to control it. But if it's going to damage it to the point to where it's going to break off or something like that then then we, we won't do it. We'll, we'll do a deep condition first, and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll work on uh, the health of the hair before we work on the uh, cosmetic part of it. All right. So as someone who has been working in this space for as long as you have, um, do you have, like, what's your greatest piece of advice for up-and-comers? Um, my greatest piece of advi advice would be to educate yourself. Um, don't go to cosmetology school, get your license and think you know it all. That because you still know nothing. And so you, you, you know enough to get that license. You need to educate yourself after that, that's where your education begins, and it uh, it has. Uh, I remember uh, when I did my first uh, guest, my very first client, uh, after I was licensed, 26 years ago now, and uh, I was working at a place called Gafers, uh, Mac Ray's Bottom, and it was in a mall. And a lady, a lady came, and she had long hair, and she wanted a bob. And uh, I had cut a bob in school, but I hadn't perfected it. I just cut one, you know what I mean? And so I trimmed her hair maybe about a half an inch or something like that, and her hair was still super long, you know? And she was like, oh, no, I wanted a bob. I wanted it, you know, up here and stuff yeah. like that. I said, you don't want me to mess you up, do you? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> she tipped me and left fast. <laughs> and so, and so, I knew right then. I was like, "Yeah, well, I thought I, you know, I have, I have a license to make it so bad." My mom, I, like I mentioned, I would go to the salon with my mom, and I was like, "Hey, mom, I got my license. Um, uh, uh, now I'm gonna do your hair." She said, "No, nah, you can't do my hair until you get good." And I was like, "Wow, all right." So like, she but, let you practice on no, none of that. You know what I'm saying? And so she said, "I was like, wow." And then you know that further brought on the wow. I really thought I knew something, you know. And so um, that's when I went on a quest uh, to look for education. And um, so what I did was I started going to uh, these classes that they had. Uh, in the um, around town, you know, I would go to the professional beauty supply places like Armstrong McCall, RDA, uh, some different places like that, and I would go find out when the classes uh, were going to be, and then I would attend these classes. Well, when you go to a branded class, uh, whatever they show you, if they show you a haircut or a color technique, you have to do it with their stuff. So you'll end up with 50 different lines of product when you really probably only need to work with one or two, you know. Mm -hmm. So I was like, eh, but, you know, it's okay. But, like, they're more about the product than the technique. So I, I, I joined the educational committee uh, in the state uh, that I was in, and 
I, I they did nothing but technique, so that was nice. But it just wasn't it. So I started going to the hair shows, and then because there's hair shows, um, national and international, and they're all over and they're uh, all the time. And there's bigger ones, smaller ones, and they're all over the place. So I started going to shows and stuff like that. And one day, I was uh, at a hair show, and I was I was watching the people on stage do hair. And I was like, wow, that is cool. I wish I could do that. And so. I went and talked to some people, uh, and I was like, man, how do I get into this? And um, it was uh, a company called Artec. Uh, L'Oreal owns them now, but it was owned by two gentlemen, uh, Leland Hurst and Michael Mazzi out of New York. And I went and talked to their staff, and I, you know, being a people person, you know, they liked me and everything. They said, hey, all right, why don't you, uh, we, we're going to try you out. Well, we're going to, um, our next show is in Corpus Christi, Texas, and we're going to uh, fly you out and we're going to, you can work with us. So I, I, I work with them. Um, and every company has uh, like national trainings every year uh, that last like a week. When I went to my first national training, that was it. I knew that that was the education I needed because it's, it comes from the horse's mouth. You know what I mean? Yep. And it was the best education I ever got. So I was like, oh my God, here it is. So I started, I stayed with the company. I stayed with, like, if I wanted to learn more about color, I worked for a color company. Uh, I worked for uh, It and Lee, uh, which was a European company. And then I got with L'Oreal, which is the largest hair company in the world. And I worked for two of their professional product divisions all the way up until uh, 2020, just a couple of years ago, um, with Mazzani and uh, with L'Oreal Professional. L'Oreal Professional being a color, Mazzani being a textured hair company, and uh, it has just been a lovely, lovely thing. So I became that platform artist, uh, and uh, I also did classes, shows, uh, we did videos, uh, just everything. Like it, it was, it was a wonderful thing. I, I had got up to the point where I was on like six planes a week. Uh, it was, it was, it was a cool thing. But be careful when you say you want to travel because I tell you what, that that, that got old quick. Yeah. But <laughs> but it was it was a uh, it, it was fun once you get there and you do your thing, man. It is really fun and they treat you like royalty. It's good. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, so I think this about wraps us up. Um, thank you for your time, Warren. Thanks for being here today. All right. Yep, this has been Laura with uh, Beyond Beauty signing off. Thanks. Thank you.